Welcome back to the channel. Do you think you're using the RWR correctly? Why are there so many players that do not understand the RWR? Understanding how to effectively use the RWR might be exactly what you're missing. It increases your SA, situation awareness, and it decreases your chance of getting shot down. In this video, I'll cover how to effectively use the RWR in Falcon BMS. So in the overview, we'll be going over the purpose of the RWR, BMS functionality, symbols, rings, weaknesses of it, audios and sounds, the prime panel, and some tactical uses at the end. So the RWR, or radar warning receivers, are very complicated, but this is a simple version of what it does. It has several antennas to detect radio emissions of radar systems vital for identifying, avoiding, and evading threats. As you can see here, it has right aft sector antennas, left and left forward. This is kind of what the antennas see, and it displays it on your RWR based on what direction it is. There are many things that the RWR provides to the pilot more than just the radar mode and type. It provides lethality determination based on strength capability of the emitter, along with azimuth direction. Strength and capability is based on the rings, and the azimuth is based on the direction that the emitter is. It also provides the pilot with quick and understandable situation awareness by giving the symbology based on the emitter that the RWR deems that it is. So we're going to go over some of the symbols that are in your BMS threat guide in your docs folder, 00 BMS manuals, and BMS threat guide. All of this is in there. So these symbols are pretty self-explanatory. The carrot on top is all of your aircraft, so 4, F4, 5, F5, and so on. The left side here is surface threats without the carrot, so that's SA2, SA3, so on and so forth. Diamond equals the highest priority when in diamond float mode. I'll talk about that later. So BMS functionality detects frequency ranges between 0.5 gigahertz and 20 gigahertz. This is enough for all the threats in BMS. You see just about everything. Right here you can see the C-band as an F and a 50, the Hawk. Down here is the spoon rest. It is not between the ALR-56M, so you won't see that. Also it has here more aircraft, some SAMs, SA-8, SA-11, SA-15. has more stuff here, so this is the range of the RWR in BMS. Like I said before, rings are not necessarily distance, but lethality based on strength of the emitter and the capabilities of that threat. The outer ring is non-lethal, and the inner ring is lethal based on the proximity and the em emitter capabilities. Stronger signals will cause inner ring indication even if the emitter radar is in search mode. They might not be locked onto you, but they are there. In close proximity, therefore, it will bring it up on the inner ring. But here is a visual representation of the rings. You got this inner ring, the inside of this red dotted circle, and then the outer ring is on the outside of this red dotted circle. As you can see, the 30 is in the outer ring. This 30 has moved to the inner ring. So rings, again, are not necessarily distance, but they measure lethality based on strength of the emitter and capabilities of that threat. So this 30 is outside of its lethal range, so therefore it places it on the outer ring based on known strengths at certain ranges. Moving down here, it has deemed the 29s outside of their normal range, and has moved the 30 to the inner ring, being that it's probably a little closer than the MiG-29s. But that is not always the case. Also, this 30 might be locked moving it up in priority, therefore moving it to the inner ring based on lethality. If this 30 is far away, it would not come up on the inner ring because the strength is not strong enough for it to reach the aircraft. Therefore, it places it on the outer ring. It might still have the diamond, and it might still give you the audio warning that you're being spiked. So these rings, keep that in mind when you're flying around. There are some weaknesses with the RWR. Directly above and below the aircraft is an RWR blind spot. So if you're turning and you place the top of your aircraft toward the threat, it may disappear. This does not necessarily mean that the threat is gone. So therefore, before you make a decision, always level your wings to verify a threat's presence. Once you level your wings, it'll move into the RWR coverage and therefore reappear. So here the MIG is locked on. There's a launch, so I'm going to put it in the blind spot to show you what it looks like. So here I'm in the blind spot, putting the, my underbelly towards the missile. Waiting for it to time out. There it is, times out. You may feel you're safe, it comes back. I'm gonna put it back in the blind spot, it's gone. Wings level, it's back. Also, the accuracy of it, of it is not the best. Sometimes when the symbology initially comes up, it could jump around as much as 180 degrees from the aft to the front and vice versa. So there are many sounds that you need to be very familiar with if you're wanting to use the RWR effectively. Got the new guy air tone. You got the new guy surface tone. The new guy air tone is a higher tone, therefore it's in the air. 
and you got the surface tone, which is a lower tone, therefore it's on the ground. That's how you can kind of remember which one is which. New symbology alternates between normal and large size for four seconds. Most emitters have different sounds, which can be used to catch your attention without having to look at the RWR. Three, four. Three, four. You can check it out in the tactical reference in BMS for the emitters and what sounds they make. So the tactical reference is located here. Go into the fighter that you want to look at. I'm going to go into the J-15. There's a J-15. The slot back, press this button here, and it'll play the sound. Also, to do it for surface threats, go into Vehicles, SAMs, choose what SAM you want, do SA-6, press Tracking, and that's what it sounds like. SA-2, SA-4, SA-8. You can do that for any SAM in BMS. When the emitter and radar tracks you, locks onto you, also known as spiking, it is a constant sound from the RWR accompanied by the diamond and usually placed in the inner ring. So audio is about half the functionality of the RWR. Remember to always listen to it. So the threat warning prime panel is located just to the left of your RWR. This button right here is the handoff mode. You need this to be in diamond mode, which is up here. It'll have the two, two bars and the diamond in the middle. If it is off, it won't have the two bars or the diamond in the middle. You want it to look like this. You want to have it like that. All you have to do is just click on it once and it'll go into handoff mode. This mode floats the diamond to the highest priority threat, recommended mode of use. The other mode, which is being that it's off, is called normal. The diamond symbol is inhibited and no spike audible indications. This could, be, could lead to a very quiet RWR. Priority mode only has a handful of priority emitters that you would want to look at. This is used if you have a very crowded RWR and you only want to see the priorities. Target separate, the single press that separates overlapping symbols for five seconds. So if you have a very crowded RWR again, and you don't quite want to go in a priority, you can press target separate, it'll separate all of them so you can see them all individually. When flying around, using your RWR is a fraction of your capabilities in the F-16. Once you get familiarized with it, you'll be more effective. This gives you directional SA, can be used to correlate hot radar returns. So if you see someone's hot on your nose, and you can kind of correlate it to a, a hostile type threat, then you can have a better understanding of if it's hostile or not. The SA-10 does not have a launch warning. Once the 10 goes to the inner ring, you have to assume a launch and defend accordingly. Usually that just means to turn around and flow cold. Also, most important is to know what the threat is capable of. So if you see a 30 on the RWR, you need to know what a SU-30 is capable of. As you can see in this clip, the RWR gives me a greater understanding of what threats is around me. As you can see, the 29 and the 21 increasingly getting closer and closer in the inner ring. Flare, 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 flare,